Number 10, when the saints come marching in. The Kiesler and his girlfriend were on a road trip through California when they found a relatively empty campsite. They set up camp, made dinner, and went to bed. In the middle of the night, they were awoken by someone whistling outside their tent to the tune of When the Saints Come Marching In. They laid in utter silence, hoping the singing person would go away. But then the whistling turned to chanting. When you sleep here, you disrespect me, and when you disrespect me, you disrespect the US Marines. The Reddit user knew they needed to get out. They quietly climbed from their tent into their truck and drove to a motel in the neighboring town. The next morning, they drove back to the campsite to retrieve their belongings they had left behind. As they were leaving, they paused at a site adjacent to where they had slept, where a family had been staying. The family told the Kiesler that the singing had continued for another two to three hours after they left, and it was one of the creepiest things they'd ever experienced. Number nine, the Florida Keys. Jackman was camping in the Florida Keys near a quarry and an old dump site. One day, someone showed up at their camp and said that they needed to move further from the dump site. He was planning on cleaning up the junk and burning some of the refuse in the area. The user moved and that night the men started burning. Both parties went about their business. That night, the peaceful camping trip took a turn. They woke to the sound of scratching outside their tent. When they opened their eyes, they found their tent was covered in hundreds of rats. They shook off as many as they could before climbing from the tent. The rats had gone, but the writer was too freaked to go back to sleep. Instead, they started a fire and stayed up for the rest of the night. The next night, the Reddit writer fell asleep hesitantly, but thought it would be okay because the men had finished their burning. Yet again, they woke on the second night to their tent covered in rats. They used the same strategy, shaking the tent until the little critters fell off, then starting a fire. But after this, they'd had enough. They packed up their things and headed back for the highway. As they were walking along the road, they came upon the body of a giant alligator. Suffice it to say, they had their fill of camping in Florida. Number eight, crime scene. Every summer when Camo Panda went to visit their dad, the two would take trips into the mountains. On one trip, however, their experience left them incredibly uneasy. They were hiking down a steep slope when they saw an old rifle sticking from a tree. It looked like the tree had grown around the barrel many years before. They went to get a closer look and found a small cave. Inside, the two found a handful of aged personal belongings that made it seem as though the cave had once been inhabited. There were three cans of unopened opened food, a rusted cast iron pot, an old saddle and a bridle set, and a deteriorated wool blanket. They unrolled the blanket and here's where things got really freaky. Inside, they found a shirt with holes and blood stains crumpled up. The writer's father estimated the gun they found in the tree to have been from the 1870s, meaning whoever had been shot and most likely forcefully removed from life in those woods likely passed away around that same time. Number seven, orbs. TX underscore and their family were camping on a lake in central Texas. On the first night, they were playing Pictionary by the campfire when they saw a light fly over by the lake. For a moment, they didn't think much of it and instead continued the game. Then another went by at the same speed, following the exact same trajectory as the first. They were reddish yellow orbs with no sound coming from them. After about 15 of the orbs went by, a faster, smaller white one came in behind the rest. Then they were all gone. Not much was said about the event for the rest of the trip, but when they returned home, their mother looked up what the lights could have been. She discovered that people in a town a few miles from where they'd been camping also reported seeing the lights. No one had an explanation for what they were. Number six, The Watcher. The user Border Trilogy is no stranger when it comes to camping, but when he and his wife wandered off the trail while backpacking in Maine, they had a rather strange encounter. They had prepared to be on the trail for 10 days, and so far hadn't seen another person since first hitting the trail. The couple had hoped not to see anyone else on their trip, so this was perfect. Normally, they just sleep under the stars. One night, because it was drizzling, they set up their little tent and climbed inside for the night. Around sunrise the next morning, he crawled from their tent to see a man Man standing about 30 feet from them, staring. The Reddit user greeted them, but without saying a word, the man turned and disappeared into the woods. The couple were out there for another few days and kept waiting to run into the man again, but never did. That is actually freaky. I just felt like 
my back shiver. Number five, the old man. One macabre cat went camping at a summer program when he was just 16. When he went to bed one night, the group stayed awake, chatting in their tent, when they suddenly started to hear heavy breathing nearby. He described the noise sounding like someone had just been sprinting and stopped right outside their tent. Trying to stay calm, he ignores it and keeps chatting. Then they heard, please help me. Everyone in the tent went silent. They heard the questions again. At this point, they were all freaked out. Then one of the braver kids turned on a flashlight and opened the inner flap to see out. They saw a pair of bare, scabbed, and pale legs standing there. It seemed as though the guy had been walking nude through the woods for a while. The man asked for help again, and the boy who opened the tent told the man to keep walking down the trail and he should find a ranger soon. The man responded, no. No rangers, they keep me here. One of the camp chaperones came out and asked the man a series of questions. The old man didn't answer. Instead, he started sobbing and ran into the woods. Number four, the mountain lion. Pillow Pants 101 was in Canada climbing with a friend, and they were on their way back to their car with their dog, walking around between them on their leash. Suddenly, it stumbled into his friend, causing him to stumble. The writer turned around and saw a full-grown mountain lion standing about two feet behind them. It had just tried to pull the dog off its leash and was now sitting back on its haunches, hissing. The Reddit user froze, but their friend turned around and started running. They yelled for their friend to stop, running would make the mountain lion want to chase them. Their friend stopped, then turned and ran directly at the cat, screaming and waving his arms. The cat jumped into the woods away from sight. The two started walking faster down the trail, but when they turned around, the mountain lion was right behind them and even closer this time than before. The friend started throwing rocks. One of the rocks landed and rolled past the lion. The animal chased it down the trail until it disappeared. During the last mile or so back to the camp, the two kept checking over their shoulder, but the mountain lion never returned. After they were off the trail, they heard about a couple hikers and their dog who had apparently encountered the same mountain lion. This time, the lion had been successful in getting the dog off the leash. Eventually, the Canadian Mounties hunted it down and ended it. Number three, disappearing ocean. What's really going on and their husband were camping in the Everglades in Florida. On the first night, they had the entire island to themselves. They set up camp on the beach and the view of the wide open Gulf of Mexico was spectacular. The two settled into their tent and fell asleep to the sound of gentle waves hitting the beach. But around two in the morning, the Reddit writer woke up and heard nothing. They went out and shone their flashlight out to where the water should have been, but it wasn't there. The beach where the couple had just been fishing a few hours before extended beyond the reach of their flashlight beam. They ventured out but still saw no ocean. They went back into the tent and remembered that right before a tsunami hits, the water recedes. Convinced there was a tsunami approaching, they were terrified. Eventually the sound of the water returned and the writer couldn't describe the intense relief they felt. Number two, aliens. Dashboard for Fire saw an alien come out of the woods behind their house. They were 10 years old playing in their room alone and it was about 11 p.m. They had the sliding glass door in their room open with the blinds pulled back. Out of nowhere, the automatic light behind their house turned on. They looked out the sliding glass door and saw a figure approach the door. At first, they thought it was their neighbor, but as they looked closer, they realized it had to be something else. It stopped at the sliding glass door and stared into the writer's room. Their description says it was dark black with a rounded head and stood at about six feet tall. It had two arms, two legs, and was incredibly thin. After it stared for a few minutes, it suddenly turned and was gone. They yelled for their mom, who, when told the story, didn't believe a word of it. Now at age 23, this Reddit user still gets chills when they think about what they saw that night. And I would too. That sounds terrifying. Number one, knocking. Snaggy from JOT and their girlfriend were sitting in their car that was parked at a rest area having something to eat after visiting the renowned Mount St. Helens. It was raining so the windows were fogged and thanks to the approaching nightfall, it was getting dark. The couple was minding their own business when suddenly there was a series of three knocks on the driver's side window. They were both startled, there was no one else in the parking lot. Even more terrifyingly, the driver's side of the car was overlooking an embankment. They rolled down their window and looked out, but saw no one. This was enough to thoroughly creep them out, and they left immediately. Later, they read a park flyer that a man had passed away there during the eruption. Ever since, they've been wondering if the knocks on the car door were that man's ghost, desperately trying to be saved. Number 10, Fresh Prince, and not from Bel Air. 
From Redditor Hands the Fram, I was staying at a family friend's cabin deep in the woods. It had a large deck that had about a foot of fresh snow on it. I had been cooking slash messing around in the kitchen that you can't see the deck from. I'm walking around turning off lights and notice multiple sets of footprints walking from the woods up onto the deck, up to the door, then all over the deck and back into the woods. I stayed up with my dog all night and left at first light. Number nine, we're not alone. From Redditor Jameson Zane, my brother and I were home alone from school because we were sick. We had a craft room in the mostly unfinished basement and we were down there playing with miniatures. Around noon, we heard very clearly the front door unlocked, open, closed, and someone walked in shoes across the foyer tile to the kitchen and turned on the sink. They then turned off the sink and went up the stairs to the second floor. I figured it was my stepdad and called my mom to let her know he came home from lunch. She had just gotten off the phone with my stepdad and knew he was in the office at work. She called him back and he came ripping home while we hid in the basement. Although we never heard the person come back down the stairs, we didn't find anyone in the house. Number 8. Who's out there? From Redditor Chaos Element, but chaos is spelt with a K, one night I was home alone when I was 9 or 10. I heard my dog barking up a storm outside. Now, I had a giant Bernese mountain dog. He never barked his whole life, just calm, quiet, and gentle. Still, I didn't think much of it, until he was at the sliding glass door, all hair on end, barking like never before. I let him in and he physically shoved me back, then stood between me and the door for five of the scariest minutes of my life. He just growled and barked the whole time, wouldn't let me anywhere near the door. Then, like a light, he just turned around, licked me, and laid down. I have no earthly clue what was out there, but it wasn't getting to me. Number seven, you order a pizza? From Redditor Bapa, as a kid, I'd be left alone with a teenage babysitter. So technically I wasn't home alone, but there were no adults. One time, a strange man walked in the front door where we were playing and looked surprised to see us there. I remember the man claiming to be a pizza delivery driver and asking us if we ordered a pizza. My babysitter was quick to react and asked him why he just walked into the house and also where the pizza was if he was actually there to deliver a pizza. The guy said it was in the car and that he'd go get it. My babysitter closed and locked the door behind him and shortly afterwards there was a loud knock at the door. This time a large shirtless man was standing outside also claiming to be a pizza delivery guy. Still no pizza of course. My babysitter wasn't having any of it and and yelled through the door to tell the man he was calling 911. Thankfully, it was at this point the two guys got back in their car and drove away. Number six, something is in this bed. From Redditor Many Ranger 4, I lived in an apartment by myself, and every once in a while I'd be about to fall asleep when I'd feel a weight next to me. It felt as if someone had gotten into bed with me. At the time, I was dating a woman who would sleep over from time to time, but I never mentioned this to her. One night while she was over, I had to leave due to a family emergency. I told her it's okay if she sleeps at mine alone, if she would like that, and that I would be back the next day. I get home that morning and she tells me the weirdest thing happened last night. As I was falling asleep, I thought you had come home and gotten into bed with me because I definitely felt someone get into bed on the other side, but when I opened my eyes, you weren't here. Freaks me out. Number five, leave the door open. From Redditor Aiden Blaze, I don't usually latch my bedroom door, but I did this one time. I dozed off for a bit and woke up like 20 minutes later to my door wide open. I thought that maybe I didn't latch it properly. When I relocked it, I made sure to latch it properly so that it couldn't be opened from the outside. I started watching a movie and when I got up to get some water, I saw that again my door was wide open. I got so freaked out I just screamed out loud. I heard the pattering of footsteps and I ran after them, but it couldn't have been anyone in my house because the main door was locked and all the windows were shut. I spent an hour and a half searching and there was no one in the house. Number four, someone is using my microwave. From Redditor Moose of Doom 23, I was home alone one night when I was 13 or 14. The kitchen was next to the TV room. I was sitting watching TV when I heard someone in the kitchen start pressing microwave buttons and then hit cook. I froze and then crept over to peek into the kitchen. There was no one there. The microwave was running with a time initially set for like five minutes or something with nothing in it. No explanation. The house had always been extremely creepy for various reasons, but nothing like that had happened before. Number three, something suspicious about the blinds. 
From Redditor Bezos Alt account, I was about 12 or 13 when I was left alone for the first time. We lived on a ranch about 25 minutes from town, with my only neighbors being my grandparents who are very old. I was sitting in my room watching YouTube when I heard a heavy creak on one of the steps outside my window. I paused my video and stared at my window, closed by blinds, knowing that all I have to do is open them and see what it is, but I ignore it. After a minute, I hear three more heavy steps. Sounds like the bottom of boots on wood. I spring out of bed and into the hallway while calling my mom. I frantically explain the situation quietly and she asks me a simple question. Are the dogs even barking? No. I have three white labs, all in the main room, that have a clear sight of the back porch. I let out a sigh of relief and hang up the phone. The second I end the call with my mom, my dogs absolutely go wild. Barking, baring teeth, hair standing up, and all. I ran to my room and called my brother, telling him to get home immediately. My dogs bark for maybe another few seconds, and they stop. Never found out what was behind the blinds. Number two, I heard something. From Redditor Curious Relish, I wasn't technically alone as my husband was in the house, but because of his medication, he couldn't do anything to help if there was an emergency. I was downstairs with my husband snoring beside me. I heard from the top of our basement stairs, hello? Hello? Is everybody okay? I went up to figure out who it was and thought maybe we'd accidentally left a door open somehow. Searched everywhere, nothing even slightly amiss. Made a phone call and got my neighbor over. Both doors were shut and locked. Did a thorough check behind every door, the tub, under furniture, etc. Nothing. No one. This has happened several times and my only explanation is that it's our neighbor. For some reason, when we're in the basement, everything our neighbor does sounds like it's in our townhouse. Though I think that might be creepier, as I have no idea why he's walking around his own house calling out hello and asking if everyone's okay. Number one, the thump. From Redditor Flib Hurton, Just Us, my parents had gone out and I was standing in the kitchen talking on the phone. Suddenly, there's a thumping on the floor under my feet. There's no way into the area under my feet as there's a cinder block wall between the basement and a hollow space beyond. I only know it's there because the hole where the plumbing runs through was overly large and we patched it when we moved in. The thumping happens again. It's like someone hitting the ceiling with their fists below me. The lights flicker. The picture on the television jumps up and down. I run to the living room and jump onto the couch, cover my head with my blanket. My parents pull into the driveway and everything stops. It never happened again and still scares me 33 years later. Number 10, the Men in Black encounter in Roswell, New Mexico. In 1947, a farmer reportedly witnessed a crashed UFO near the town of Roswell and found three humanoid figures dressed in black suits surrounding the craft. When he approached them, they simply vanished without a trace. The mysterious encounter in Roswell, New Mexico has become one of the most widely discussed and debated incidents among believers in UFOs. There have been various theories as to who these figures were, with some believing they were extraterrestrials, while others suggest they could have been representatives from a secret government agency or even time travel. Travelers. The witnesses describe the men as being tall and intimidating with bald heads and pale skin. They also wore dark sunglasses and gloves, making them appear even more mysterious. While some believe that these men in black may be part of an alien conspiracy to keep humans from discovering their presence on Earth, there is no concrete evidence to support this claim. What makes this particular case so intriguing is the fact that similar encounters with unknown individuals wearing black suits have been reported throughout history in different parts of the world. These stories involve strange events such as being taken for unexplained tests or receiving warnings about speaking publicly about UFOs or other paranormal activity. For example, witnesses have reported seeing a mysterious figure warning them not to speak out about what they saw or heard. As a result, many believe that these men in black are part of a global cover-up of alien activities on Earth. Number 9. The Lubbock Lights Case On August 25th, 1951, several citizens of Lubbock, Texas reported seeing up to 25 glowing objects flying in formation over the city skyline at around 8pm. All witnesses reported that two mysterious men in black appeared soon after and questioned each one about their experience before departing with no explanation. The Lubbock Lights case is one of the most famous men in black encounters of all time. All witnesses describe the objects as being shaped like saucers or discs and emitting a bluish greenish glow. Shortly after the sightings, two mysterious figures wearing black suits reportedly appeared and began questioning each witness about their experience before 
disappearing without a trace. The incident gained national attention when a newspaper reporter wrote an article detailing the accounts of those involved and speculating that they had seen an alien spacecraft. The story was picked up by the national news outlets and sparked much debate among the public. Since then, there has been much speculation over what these men in black may have been. Some believe that it was extraterrestrials. Some think they could be government agents sent to cover up evidence of UFOs or aliens. No definitive answer has ever been found as to their identity or purpose. Number eight, the Puerto Rican MIBs. A group of Puerto Rican teenagers were reportedly harassed by a pair of men in black in 1993. The Puerto Rican MIBs incident has remained a source of fascination and speculation for over two decades. In 1993, a group of teenagers from Puerto Rico reported that they were followed by two men in black for several days. The MIBs took photographs and asked questions about their experience seeing a UFO in the area. Witnesses described the MIBs as wearing dark suits and driving an old car without license plates. The incident gained wide widespread attention when it was reported in the media and sparked much speculation over who these mysterious figures may have been. Some believe that they could have been hoaxers or pranksters trying to scare people. In recent years, some researchers have attempted to uncover more information about these MIBs by attempting to locate witnesses who saw them during that time period. However, there has not been substantial evidence found which suggests what these strange figures may have wanted or who they were associated with. Despite the lack of solid evidence, the case of the Puerto Rican men in black still remains one of the most mysterious encounters with this phenomena ever reported. It is yet another example of how little we really know about the world around us and how vast our universe truly is. Number seven, the battle of Brisbane. During the early 1950s, two Australian scientists reported being harassed by four men in black who demanded they turn over a computer they had built to analyze flying saucer data. When the MIBs threatened violence, the Australians fought back and scared them off. The Battle of Brisbane is one of the strangest men in black cases to ever occur. Witnesses described the MIBs as wearing black suits and having pale skin, dark facial hair, and no facial features. They reportedly communicated to the scientists in a strange language that sounded like an alien dialect. When the MIBs threatened violence, one of the scientists fought back with a hammer and scared them off. The incident has since become part of UFO folklore and remains a source of fascination for many. Although there is no concrete evidence that proves the Battle of Brisbane actually occurred, the case has caught the attention of UFO researchers and alien enthusiasts for over 60 years. Number six, the Maury Island Incident. The Maury Island incident is one of the most famous and mysterious men in black cases ever reported. In 1947, Harold Dahl was fishing near Puget Sound in Washington state when he noticed six unusual objects hovering above his boat. At first, he assumed they were aircraft from a nearby military base, but upon closer inspection, they seemed to be something else entirely. The objects then disappeared and two men dressed entirely in black stepped out of the fog and approached Dahl's boat. The men warned him not to tell anyone about his sighting or else there would be consequences. They reportedly spoke in a strange language that sounded like an alien dialect and had pale skin and no facial features just like the previous ones. After the incident, Dahl went public with his story which led to widespread media coverage and speculation. Many people believe that the men in black were extraterrestrials sent to protect alien technology from being discovered, while others suggest they could have been hoaxers or pranksters. Number five, the Flatwoods Monster. The Flatwoods Monster encounter is one of the most famous and perplexing men in black cases ever reported. In 1952, a group of West Virginians were playing in some nearby woods when they noticed a strange metallic figure accompanied by two men in black. Witnesses described the figures as wearing black suits, the MIBs then proceeded to threaten the people not to tell anyone what they had seen. Terrified, the people ran back to their homes and told their parents about their incident. In the days following, news spread quickly about the alleged sighting and people from other towns began to flock to Flatwoods in search of answers. Local law enforcement conducted an investigation into what had happened, but weren't able to find any evidence of extraterrestrial activity. Since then, researchers have speculated as to who these mysterious figures may have been. Some believe it was just some random people trying to scare people away from investigating further. Number four, the Falcon Lake incident. The Falcon Lake incident is one of the most notorious men in black cases in recent history. In 1967, Canadian resident Stefan Michalak was looking for quartz in a remote area near Falcon Lake when he encountered two men in black. Michalak claims that he approached the MIBs to ask what they were doing at the lake, but received no response. 
He then noticed a large craft hovering above him which had two exhaust pipes on its underside before it suddenly vanished. After this incident, Michalak reported suffering from radiation poisoning, nausea, and burns on his chest, which may have been caused by contact with an alien energy source. In the days following his encounter, Michalak also found strange footprints left behind by the MIBs, as well as metallic debris which seemed to be part of some sort of advanced technology or machinery. Number 3. The Allagash Abduction In 1976, four college students from Maine were out camping near Allagash Waterway when they noticed a strange light in the night sky. Initially believed to be an airplane, the group soon realized that what they were witnessing was something far more mysterious as the light began to move around erratically before eventually disappearing. A few minutes later, the group heard a loud humming sound coming from above and saw two bright lights in the sky. This time, they knew it wasn't an airplane. The next thing they remembered was waking up hours later with no recollection of what had happened during those hours. The four men reported that their abductors had gray skin with large eyes and bald heads and communicated telepathically with them during their experience. They were taken aboard a UFO where various medical tests were performed on them before being released back to their campsite. Afterwards, the men encountered two men in black who warned them not to tell anyone about their experience or else face serious consequences. Number two, the Kecksburg incident. The Kecksburg incident is one of the most mysterious and controversial events in modern history. On December 9th, 1965, an object resembling a large bell was seen crashing in Pennsylvania's woods near the town of Kecksburg. Witnesses reported seeing several military vehicles racing to the scene, as well as some mysterious figures dressed entirely in black. The strange object was eventually retrieved by the military, but no explanation was given as to what it could have been. Some witnesses described it as being a large metallic acorn-shaped object with an inscribed symbol on one side resembling the letter O, or U, wrapped around a diamond shape. Others claim to have heard high-pitched sounds coming from it before it was taken by the military. When local residents asked about the incident, they were told that nothing out of the ordinary had happened and that it must have been a weather balloon or a meteorite. However, multiple eyewitness accounts suggest that this is unlikely and that something else may have taken place that day in Kecksburg. Speculation suggests that what crashed near Kecksburg could have been an alien spacecraft or even some sort of advanced secret government project. Number 1. The Toronto Encounter the Toronto encounter is one of the most bizarre and perplexing UFO encounters in recent history. On August 3, 1989, three Canadian ufologists, John Venter, Paul Shishis, and Don Ledger, were out on a boat near Lake Ontario when they noticed an abnormally large craft hovering in the night sky above them. It was described as being several hundred feet long, flat black in color, and had no visible windows or doors. The men were immediately overcome with fear, but managed to take some photographs before the craft quickly shot off into the distance. Afterward, they returned to shore only to find five mysterious figures dressed entirely in black waiting for them along the beach. They warned them not to tell anything about what they had seen, and this incident has been thoroughly investigated by various researchers and scientists over the years, but still remains unsolved due to the lack of evidence. Number 10, Interrogated. From Redditor Just Bronze Stuff, I was at this guy's birthday party and he invited me to sleep over. After everyone left, he locked his door and got a military flashlight and a camera. The dude proceeded to interrogate me at very private or uncomfortable levels. And every time I refused to answer, he'd hit me with the flashlight. He had to take a leak and locked the door on the way out, leaving me locked in. I didn't have a cell phone at the time, but he did have a phone there. I left a desperate voicemail at my house and hoped for the best. It took my mom three hours to listen and go pick me up. By the time she arrived, I was scared, bruised, and crying. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. Number 9. Home Invasion from Redditor K. Iller Orange Cat, my friend Bobby's mother would not let him come over and spend the night, but she told him it was alright if I came over and spent the night with him. I was really in the mood for a sleepover, so I went ahead and did it. I woke up feeling thirstier than I ever could have imagined. Getting up, I stumbled out of bed and downstairs while not turning on any light at all. When I walked into the kitchen, I turned on the light. Immediately, I saw a man, a huge man, at the far window. Actually, he was going through the window. He was half in and half out. I was terrified, but before the guy could get all the way through the window, I screamed and ran in the other direction and ran back upstairs, back to Bobby's mother's room. I pounded on the door. 
Bobby had woken up and he came into the hallway before his mom had opened the door. Finally, the door opened. She looked at us and then suddenly passed us. Both Bobby and I turned and noticed the man reaching the top of the stairs. Quickly, she ushered us into the room and locked the door. She called 911 and then grabbed her gun from the closet. She told the guy who was now rattling the door that she had a gun and would use it. That didn't deter him until she fired off a shot and he ran off. Number eight, not so secret admirer. From Redditor Tor Van, some friends and I were staying at another friend's house. I'm a girl for context. One of my friends, I'll call her Steph, was always very open to the fact that she thought I was smoking hot. I felt a bit weirded out sometimes because I wasn't sure if she was being serious or not. I didn't mind whether or not she liked me, but sometimes it would get a little too much and she'd say things like, oh, the things I'd do to you. So at this sleepover, Steph, our other friends and I began to play a game. It started off as a bit of fun, but soon Steph started to get rough and would tackle me to the ground and pin me there. I was genuinely a little bit scared and the other girls started to notice that it was a little bit too close for comfort. So we did what we had to do. We each grabbed one of Steph's limbs and proceeded to tie her arms behind her back and her legs together. It took a good 20 minutes because Steph is very strong and quite persistent. Eventually we managed to keep her down and we proceeded to watch television. That is until somehow Steph managed to escape. This was like a horror film stuff. We all ran upstairs, the three other girls made it to a bedroom and I ran into the bathroom. I locked myself inside and Steph started banging on the door. I don't know how long I was in there for but it started to get bright and Steph was outside the whole time waiting for me to come out. I slept in the bathtub that night. Number seven, imaginary intruder. From Redditor Bubblegum B Word, I spent the night at my friend Brittany's house with a bunch of other girls in our class. After her parents went to bed, one of the girls told a really scary story about an intruder breaking into the house and removing everyone's free trial of life. Suddenly, we heard noises from outside. It was probably the house settling in retrospect, and we all raced to the downstairs bathroom and stuffed ourselves in it, locking the doors behind us. So there were about five girls in this bathroom bathroom for God knows how long. We were all whimpering and scared. Eventually, one of the girls had to use the bathroom and pretty soon the toilet is full with all of our waste and we're too scared to flush it. Number six, not invited. From Diadact YT, one of my friends had a sleepover birthday party. It was pretty normal stuff. About 30 minutes after everyone had gotten there, someone knocked on the door. A kid whose parents were friends with my friend's parents. Apparently he didn't have a lot of friends so he got invited. It only took a few minutes to realize why he didn't have many friends. He was mean, physical, and would try to one-up everyone. A little later in the night, we decide to wrestle each other. That's when the night took a dark turn. He punched one of the kids in the groin, so one of the other guys went up to him and gave him a swift punch to the sternum. He fell straight to the ground. For the rest of the night, the kid didn't say a word to anyone and hid in the basement for most of the night. Number five, strict rules. From Neopolitan Mew, I went to my friend's house for the first time as she wanted to come to my house, not the other way around. However, she had never told me why. I was about to learn the truth the hard way. So I got there and after the first hour, it all went downhill. The parents had strict rules about eating at the table. They proceeded to insult me about my weight to the point I nearly cried. After that, they continued to ask me questions about my race and my family. By the time night came, I found out they had a lockdown rule in their house. We weren't allowed out of the bedroom until morning. I didn't know that and ended up getting lectured the next morning. I also didn't know that I would be forced to attend their church in the morning before I could go home. That's how I figured out why she always wanted to stay at my house and not the other way around. Number four, not a role model. From Himalayan Doobie, one night I stayed over at my friend's house and his dad, who was an alcoholic, was really angry and got angrier as he drank more. We could hear him upstairs swearing and banging stuff around and stomping on the floor. After a while, he came downstairs and started yelling at my friend for something he did wrong. A few seconds later, he pushed my friend across the room, hard. My friend looked like he was hurt badly. Then his dad came charging over and dragged me towards the hallway closet and threw me in there. He told me to keep my mouth shut and to let this be a lesson for hanging around his son. A few hours later, the noise stopped. I tried escaping, but somehow he locked the door and I didn't want to bang on it because I thought he was going to hurt me. I just sat there crying for what felt like forever. Eventually the door opened and it was my friend telling me to hurry up and leave. Luckily, I didn't have far to get home. Number three, haunted tea set. 
From Interbition 2, my friend's mom was into all those weird ghost hunting and Bigfoot shows, so over dinner she made me watch one where people went around communicating with ghosts. I was really young and had never seen anything like that before, so I believed her mom telling me it was real. I also believed her when she said the silver tea set on the dresser is haunted by my grandmother. I've seen her ghost cleaning it at night. Their house had a creepy old style feel to it too, so I was terrified to sleep. After I finally fell asleep, I was awoken suddenly by the sound of silverware rattling outside the door. I'll never forget the feeling of being frozen in fear like that. Number 2. Rumors from Soy Brookie, I slept at the popular girl's house who lived across the road from the school. Dinner was good, we got to have ice cream afterwards, and I loved staring at the fire in her fireplace. There was a rumor at school that her older brother and sister had tried to end a kid by pushing him into a pit at a house party. I don't know if it was true or not, but as a kid, it was in the back of my mind. We went to sleep at around 9.30pm, which was quite early for me. I woke up a few hours later sweating with a warm pressure on my chest. I was freaked out. I couldn't see what it was right away, then I realized it was their cat, curled up under my chin and purring. It really spooked me, so I had their mom drop me back home in the middle of the night. Number 1. Lonely Granny I stayed over at my best friend's house for almost every week when I was in elementary school. Their grandmother lived with them and everyone treated her like a burden. They told me she was crazy and mean, but she was always very kind to me. And because I was raised to be nice to my elders, I was kind in return. One day when my friend had to go to talk to her mom about something, the grandma asked me into her room. I had never been in there and it was decorated completely differently from the rest of the house. I could tell she had moved an entire house's worth of stuff into one bedroom. I can't remember our conversation, but she gave me a little metal bracelet and asked me to hide it from the family. I was scared to wear it as I didn't want my friend to get mad. Number 10. Knock knock. First of all, sound does not exist in space. There is only emptiness. This story is peculiar for precisely this reason. Yang Liwei, the first astronaut launched by the Chinese space program, and I'm sorry if I butchered that name, was purportedly on board his space shuttle in 2003 when he heard a knock. In his words, someone was knocking the body of the spaceship just as one would knock an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. It appears that he is not the only one who has gone through this. Between 2005 and 2008, additional Chinese astronauts also claimed to have heard the same noises. Number 9. Moonstone Stalkers. Conspiracy theories flooded the internet after astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon. For starters, it's said that his famous moonwalk was staged in a studio. One of the many conspiracies surrounding this event is still a mystery to this day. NASA reports that after Armstrong touched down on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, transmission was lost for around two minutes. And in reportedly a secret message to NASA, he said, These babies are huge, sir. Enormous. Oh god, you wouldn't believe Leave it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecrafts out here, lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They're on the moon watching us. Number 8. Failed Instruments Chris Hadfield's first trip required him and his fellow astronauts to steer a shuttle weighing a quarter of a million pounds towards a target on the Russian Mir space station the size of a coffee cup saucer. Hadfield's responsibility was to alert the pilot of their speed and range while they were docking. This was crucial, since the docking required a great deal of precision. In order to dock, they had a 2 minute window and had to move at a speed of 10 feet per second, plus or minus 3 hundredths of a second. It would be disastrous if they didn't do it. Hatfield stated that the spring system would bounce you off Mir if you struck it just slightly too softly. If you hit Mir just a little too soft, then the spring mechanisms would bounce you off, Hatfield explained. If you hit Mir just a little too hard, then you would break Mir in half and end the life of three people on board. So you've got to hit it exactly right. If the crew on board the flight deck of the shuttle don't solve this problem in the next 30 seconds, then the whole flight is bust and done. Yeah, their instruments went out while docking. Number 7. UFO Conundrum You've certainly seen a number of articles describing astronaut Scott Kelly's difficult journey as he prepared to stay on the International Space Station for a very long period. He later became the astronaut who logged the most time there, but his story is notable for more reasons than just that. Kelly has made comments that imply a close encounter with aliens. Although he hasn't explicitly said it, his quips looked less like jokes and more like something that all of humanity should think about. Similar like the time he said in an 
interview that aliens have it easier in space than we do. Number six, almost poisoned on a spacewalk. When he was making improvements to the ISS, Bob Kerbeam was a seasoned spacewalker. He didn't anticipate a cooling line to burst, spewing poisonous ammonia all over his suit though. Since a spaceship is a closed system, the only air you can use is the air you took with you when you launched. Therefore, an astronaut must be very certain that they are not returning to Earth carrying any hazardous material. Kerbeam needed to halt the leak first. He then had to devise a plan for returning to the space shuttle without contaminating his spacesuit with the dangerous ammonia. Kerbeam dealt with the leak without incident. Even though we were making decisions on the spot, he claimed we understood the hardware, the system, and how it works so well. Because of the training, even if you have to make things up as you go along or perform them on the spot, you can do it intelligently. For an additional 30 minutes, he baked himself in the sun, which is unquestionably one of the most bizarre and scary sunbathing techniques one can undertake. The pollution came as the following issue. With that one, some good old fashioned science came in handy. He only needed to vaporize the ammonia off of his suit because it has a low boiling point. Number five, lights. Leroy Chiao, an American astronaut and his crew witnessed a group of peculiar lights in outer space while Chiao served as commander of the ISS in 2005. Chiao characterized the pattern as resembling an upside down V. After it flew by them, the crew and Chiao happened to come across the formation. Despite the fact that some of the information regarding these objects seen in space is available for anyone to interpret, conspiracy theorists may be overly quick to smell the BS here. These tidbits from cosmic history definitely make us wonder, what truly is out there, despite the fact that there isn't much in the way of hard proof just yet. Number four, see you on the way up. While floating on the International Space Station can be enjoyable, the journey there and back can be challenging, to say the very least. According to Tripson, the Russian Soyuz spacecraft in particular has strong G-forces. According to NASA astronaut Tracy, I've heard it described as a train wreck followed by a car crash then falling off your bike. Prior to her independent flight home from the station, Caldwell Dyson recently said she claimed that after going on the vacation, the rumors were accurate. It certainly didn't disappoint, Caldwell Dyson told Space.com after she arrived. There were all the fringe bells, whistles, and sensations. Although certain things' magnitude were a little shocking, overall it was a thrilling ride. Number three, baby food. Food in space still has room for improvement. Obviously, you've seen the pictures. Despite the fact that it is no longer limited to tang and freeze dried ice cream. Fresh produce is hard to come by for instance, and ground foods like bread are unworkable because they generate crumbs that in microgravity fly everywhere instead of resting on the floor and make cleanup a mess. Instead, astronauts prefer tortillas because they produce fewer crumbs. Additionally, astronauts often become tired with the same menu of reheatable meals that are rotated every eight days. However, a robotic cargo ship that was supposed to provide supplies and fresh food to the station was delayed in the winter of 2004. As a result, the Expedition 10 crew, which involved Russian flight engineer Salazan Sharapov and NASA commander Leroy Chiao, had to restrict their meals. The two ultimately reduced their normal meal consumption by half in order to conserve resources, then made up for the missing calories by consuming an excessive amount of desserts and candies. At the time, Chiao stated it wasn't an unhealthy diet, but it wasn't an optimum one either. Number two, bones. Astronauts must contend with major health effects from their stay in orbit in addition to their daily inconveniences. The impact on their bones is one of the most important ones. According to a new study, an astronaut's bone strength decreases by at least 14% during a six month stay in space. According to other studies, an astronaut's bone mineral density can drop by 0.4% to 1.8% per month while they are stationed there, increasing their risk of fractures and osteoporosis in later life. While there is no permanent solution for this issue, astronauts make a point of performing bone strengthening exercises while they are on the space station and engaging in rigorous rehabilitation once they return to Earth in an effort to prevent having the bones of a 90 year old. Number one, all alone. The sensation of loneliness astronauts can have after spending half a year away from the entire globe, especially their family and friends, is perhaps the worst element of living in space. While crewmates and frequent phone calls home might help astronauts deal with loneliness, they occasionally have to miss important events back on Earth. While he was residing on the space station in December 2007, NASA astronaut Daniel Tanney's mother was ended in an automobile accident. Tanny had to grieve while he was in orbit more than 200 miles away, for nearly two months until he returned to Earth. 
And in 2004, NASA astronaut Michael Fink was compelled to miss the birth of his second child when his wife, Tarali, gave birth while he was on a lengthy assignment on Expedition 9 of the space station. When he finally landed four months later, he was able to meet his daughter for the first time. 